Tell us about Medigate, its product offering, and its position in the market. So Medigate is a healthcare-specific company. Uh, we firmly believe that there needs to be a solution that is uh, entirely dedicated to healthcare. And within that domain, we offer a security offering as well as an asset optimization offering. So basically what our platform does is on the one hand, it secures your clinical assets uh, within your uh, hospital or clinic. And on the other side, it also provides helpful data in terms of optimizing the assets that you use within your enterprise. So my next question would be about you and your team. What is the you know, background that you bring to this and, and how did you start the company? Why did you choose this particular business to go after when there were many options you could have uh, selected? Yeah, that's, um, it, it's, uh, it, it's an interesting story. Um, the background that I have and my, my two co-founders share, as well as many other people on the Israeli part of the, of the company, is, is Army experience. So we all uh, spent a, a good amount of years uh, in the Israeli intelligence forces, working on technological projects, uh, working on cybersecurity related projects, and so on. So that really gave us a, a good, firm understanding of, uh, of technology and specifically cybersecurity. Uh, healthcare really had nothing to do with that uh, from, a, from a, a domain perspective. The reason why we selected healthcare as a problem that we wanted to solve is, to me, was always a combination of two things. One was a, a real tangible problem that needed to be solved or still needs to be solved, mm. uh, both on the security side and on the ROI side, uh, the asset optimization side. Um, and the other piece would be that it's a really, technologically speaking, a tough problem to solve. And what we really wanted to bring in from a competitive perspective is very deep technology uh, that would be a, a barrier for our competitors to, uh, uh, to achieve. Uh, and the combination of those two, uh, two things really uh, brought us to, uh, to move forward with this, uh, with this company. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the fundraising process? How was it for your team? How the rounds differ in their approach and the goals? Because a lot of entrepreneurs listening haven't gone through three rounds of financing as you have, and they can perhaps learn from your examples. So really the, the interesting piece is that I think that um, looking back in retrospect and all the, the fundraising that we've done, it, the three fundraisers that we did were, were very different from each other in terms of what we needed to show and what we highlighted, what was successful and what wasn't. To me, the seed round was really all about the team. Of course, you had to have a good, solid idea, but really it revolved around a team that had potential to be a high performance team that could deliver on the results that it promised. The A round was different. It was more focused on product market fit and how you can prove that out. Sure, there was still some emphasis on the team, uh, not just on the founding team, but on the, the additional uh, VPs and other team members that you brought on board from a sales perspective, marketing perspective, and so on. Uh, but the bottom line was showing a, a product market fit through deals that you've done, engagements that you've had through uh, various partners and so on. Round B was about growth, and it was about showing how you grew fast since the A round, and more importantly, what your plan is to grow even further uh, as the company uh, as the company uh, develops its products and develops its sales force and so on. So really, the the emphasis changed from round to round, uh, and it was really interesting to see as as an entrepreneur how our presentation and the data that we're showing was different and I'd say even more mature uh, as, uh, as the rounds went by. How do you navigate between cybersecurity and healthcare? Because it's been traditionally somewhat separate and siloed domains. And in fact, that was again, one of our big questions during diligence. How have you found that, is, is the market learning with you? Are you doing a lot of education to the market? How is it developing 
um, and how can you uh, look to the future and improve it um, for Medicaid? It, it's a really, I think, a interesting dilemma that we've had uh, navigating between uh, the security DNA of the company, uh, but also looking broader and navigating towards broader use cases within the healthcare environment that are not necessarily security related. And it's always been a dilemma of how much effort you want to invest in each one of these, uh, each one of these buckets. What we've come to see is that when we begin our journey, just as we've done uh, through security, oftentimes the, the CISOs uh, or the security personnel that we engage with are actually trailblazers in the organization for new technologies such as Medigate. And they bring this into other stakeholders and say, hey, maybe you can benefit from these kinds of advanced analytics to drive additional value for the enterprise. So it's been a really interesting journey that started from security, whether it's the biomed security people or the information security people, network security people, but really starting from security, eh, but looking much, much broader today eh, at the challenges that, that the healthcare organization has in general. And I love that approach because it allows organizations like Medigate, who are healthcare focused, to continue their path of innovation eh, more and more and more, eh, and not just, not just be eh, constrained in the world of security. So I'm actually a big believer in this broader mission scope.